make sure to check out my Patreon for exclusive videos never before seen on YouTube. And don't forget to also check out the memberships on my channel page to join and gain access to perks and see videos early. Make sure to click the subscribe button and hit the bell and be notified of new videos. All the support goes to the production of the channel for better content. Now let's get into the video. Real quick shout out to all the members that are there on the screen. Go check them out. Go give them a like, subscribe, you know, show them some love and support. Also, if this video gets over 250 likes, I shall continue the series. Thank you all for the support. Let's get to 20,000 subscribers and I will talk to you all later. Our story begins with Lord Beerus awakening on his planet. As Lord Beerus has had odd visions of a being, a rival, that could truly give him the fight that he's been looking for for millions of years. He would speak to Whis about the Saiyans and asking if Frieza had finally did what he was told to do, as, well, Whis would state that while it is true, but there was a few Saiyans that actually survived. Now these few Saiyans, one of them defeated Frieza very easily. Now of course, Whis would then showcase on the hologram of his staff, very similar to what he showed Beerus before, but with just some different changes. Whis would state that this Saiyan, though he's immortal, he has incredible potential, and they have a being as well, called Vegeta. That rings a bell in Beerus' head. He remembers Vegeta, that's King Vegeta's son, the little prince. He's alive too? And he says yes, it appears that they were able to push the Super Saiyan power even further than that, as it is a rare ability. This does pique Beerus' interest. As he asks, well, where is this Goku and Vegeta? He wants to go meet them. Now, Goku during this time never truly met King Kai, so he would not be training there. He would actually be on Earth at Bulma's party with Vegeta and the others. So Beerus would then leave and he would arrive. This is where some changes are going to occur. Beerus, I believe, will still goof off and, you know, he'll kind of calm down a little bit and he won't be as irritated because he just wants to fight Goku. But first, that food just sound pretty delicious and he's kind of hungry. So first, before they do any real fighting, Goku was hungry too. They decided to eat, and then Goku can fight him all he wants, no problem, which Beerus understands. Though only during this issue, though, Beerus got pudding, as he was really excited to try it, all up until Goten and Trunks hit his pudding out of his hand. This would make Beerus furious. As Vegeta tried to fly in to stop it, Beerus would easily dispatch Vegeta, and this is when Vegeta would then get back up, and state, well, I guess we don't have a chance then now, don't we? As Beerus state, you know what? Just because you ruined my pudding, I'm gonna destroy this planet. Which kind of sounds like Beerus, doesn't it? As Vegeta would then power up, he would then push past his limits and go into Super Saiyan 2. And Beerus does commend that the Saiyan is very powerful. He would treat Vegeta very similar to how he treated Super Saiyan 3 Goku, not really giving too much effort. As Goku would watch as he doesn't want to interrupt Vegeta's fight as Vegeta had first dibs. Vegeta would then scream and transform into a Super Saiyan 3. Pushing his power to his maximum, he would trade blows with Beerus as this version of Vegeta is around the same level as Vegito. Now this would actually give Beerus a little bit of a little, a little back and forth as he's far stronger than Goku was. But of course, not enough for Beerus. He wasn't all that true impressed as Gohan would even jump in in his ultimate form as this version of Gohan is a little bit stronger than the original, but he's far weaker than Vegeta was. So Beerus would dispatch up the other ones very quickly before Goku would stop him and say, it's just some pudding, but I'm not gonna let you destroy my planet over some pudding. Look, how about we fight? Now Beerus states that he's looking for a Super Saiyan God, and he demands that there has to be one. If there's not, he will destroy the entire planet. But Goku doesn't never heard of one. He doesn't know what he's talking about. The fight would then begin as Goku would fight Beerus in his base form. Now this version of Goku in his base form is far more powerful than we've ever seen. As since he did fight Vegeta, Goku has been training a bit more intensely than before, and because of the Majin Buu event and other, just so he's ready for things, Goku already at this point has far surpassed Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta in his base form, and he's giving Beerus a pretty interesting fight, but it's not too much to impress the God of Destruction. 
Now Goku would transform into a Super Saiyan, but he had red eyes, which was different to Beerus, but he would be a lot more stronger, but to Beerus this is not really impressing him that much. But Goku was able to hold his own, but the issue was is that he can't sense Beerus, as Beerus has God energy and Goku does not. Now this version of Goku, even in Super Saiyan, is around the same level near there of Super Saiyan God, which is incredible considering the fact that he hasn't truly trained super intensely with motivation. But you will see very shortly in this what if that once when Goku has that, you know, fire put in him, he will become very powerful. So because of this, Beerus would then defeat Son Goku and he states he's pretty powerful, but he's not a god. Goku states, wait, let's use the Dragon Balls and ask. So, after using the Dragon Balls, the same events would happen with Fidel coming out that she's pregnant, and they had enough Saiyans to be able to give Goku the God power. Once when Goku has become a Super Saiyan God, though, he is far, far more powerful than Beerus even anticipated. As we know, Super Saiyan God pushes your potential to the max, and it gives you power that has never been seen before. All of the beings, other than Fidel, are stronger than the original, especially Vegeta. Now remember, all the Saiyans went to their max power to give it to Goku. Goku here is far more powerful than the original. His fight with Beerus was very different. As the fight commenced, Goku was flying right towards Beerus in the crimson red aura, showing his unimaginable amount of power that Beerus was not expecting. Now Beerus, of course, was taken aback by the overwhelming strength out of nowhere displayed by Goku, as he was surprised that this god power really pumped him up. Now, of course, they would trade blows back and forth, and this would send shockwaves throughout space, and the planets in the vicinity trembled at the display of raw power. Now, Goku would then fly forward with blinding speed, surprising Beerus. His movements were so fast that they appeared as just after images to everybody else, as they completely lost him, as they can't keep up with the speed. He would then deliver powerful punches and kicks at Beerus, and Beerus was actually starting to get overwhelmed, until Beerus would then skillfully pair the attacks, showing off his purple aura. The fight would then take off into space, as Beerus was truly impressed by the Saiyan's power. This means that he can definitely showcase more of his power. Goku here was still using about 80% himself, as this would actually make Beerus angry that he's holding back. As Beerus would then power up his own strength, showing more power than he's ever shown before, he would then start to overpower Goku a little bit until Goku uses 100%. And then as the battle continued, Goku was actually damaging Beerus, drawing blood, as Beerus was doing the same thing to Goku. As this version of Goku is around the same strength as Beerus at his full strength, giving Beerus the fight that he's truly been looking for. But now Beerus has had enough, Beerus then shot a full Hakai attack right at Goku, and Goku was able to destroy it. This would shock Beerus. As we know with the Hakai ability, if a user is strong enough, they are able to disperse the attack without dying. So, Beerus would then charge up a massive sphere of a Hakai and launch it right at Goku, as Goku would then charge up a full power Kamehameha wave and fire it right towards the attack, as it would end in a stalemate, blowing both the beings back as both of them were completely exhausted. But Goku was not willing to give up. Goku channeled all the power he had left to turn into a Super Saiyan, as he would then fly towards Beerus with all of his strength, and Beerus would do the same, and both of them would then clock each other in the face, similar to what they did against Frieza and they would both knock each other out. Now, of course, Whis was there, as Whis would then take them back down to Earth and heal them. Goku, for the first time, can truly say that he didn't truly win a fight. For the first time, there was somebody to actually push Goku to use his true power. Goku now has a fire within him that he's never had before. Beerus would explain that while it is true he's a god of destruction, but there are many other beings mightier than even he is. This puts a fire in Goku's belly, a fire that he's never really had before, a motivation, determination, as Goku now knows that there is somebody stronger than him, that he can become stronger. And he thanks Beerus truly. As Whis would be very interested in Goku, and even Vegeta too, and he would offer to train them. As most of the events would happen the same with Goku training with Vegeta, as Remember too is that Goku already has the God Energy, he has to learn how to channel it, same with Vegeta as well, so most of the training would pretty much happen the exact same. Now, as for Frieza. Now as for the Golden Frieza Saga, most of the events would happen the same with Frieza being brought back, and Frieza would begin his training. 
Now, you could argue that Frieza would train for a little bit longer because of how powerful he knew that Goku was, but that's really up to debate, as it wouldn't ma make a lot of sense. Frieza thinks that if he trains for a few months, he'll become the strongest. He'll become far surpassed than what Goku even was. But just for fun, let's say instead of the three to four months he trained, he trained for twice that amount. So Frieza's twice as powerful, or probably even more. So because of this, Frieza would actually have mastery over his golden, his golden form, so he would not have an issue with the stamina. So because of this, once when he arrives on Earth, pretty much all the Z fighters couldn't even touch Frieza I mean, in general, all up until Goku and Vegeta appeared. And now Goku, of course, would fight Frieza first, as Goku in his base form using the god Essence would overpower final form Frieza. Now this was impressive, as Frieza would then showcase his golden form. Goku would then showcase Super Saiyan Blue. Or is it Super Saiyan Blue? Goku has now showcased a new form that you guys saw on the thumbnail. What form is this? I want you guys to take a good look at it and then comment down below. This form is paying homage to a person called Black Frieza. Now this is not saying that this is the same form, but Goku's god power is a little bit different because of the potential that Frieza gave him. Goku's a bit more mutated than even Vegeta is. So I want you guys to comment down below what you think the name for this form shall be. And I'll pick the best one. And make sure to like the comment as well so I can pick out the best one and I'll start using it for the next part. Goku would easily overpower Golden Frieza. Even though Golden Frieza was much more stronger, Frieza had no chance against this version of Goku. To the point to where Goku was starting to get bored of Frieza. So he actually lets Vegeta jump in to fight Frieza so Vegeta can get his revenge. Now Vegeta here does have Super Saiyan Blue, the same as before. But Vegeta here is far more powerful on top of the fact that he's also fighting Goku who's stronger than he is. So Vegeta on top of being stronger than the original is also going to get bigger boost and training than the original as well. This version of Vegeta is far stronger, I would even argue past around the Goku Black Saga arc when Vegeta trained the Hypebox Time Chamber for a year, that's how powerful he is when he fought Goku Black, which is hundreds of times more powerful. So Vegeta here would, ease, would definitely have a bit more of an even fight against Frieza, but the fact that Frieza was injured in his fight with Goku and starting to get tired, Vegeta would easily handle Frieza like he did before in the original, and the difference here is would Frieza still destroy Earth? I would say yes. Because in this, Frieza would still surprise them and blow up the planet. Whis would then rewind time, as this is when Goku would fly in at full speed and completely obliterate Frieza with a Kamehameha wave, ending the Emperor once again. Now, as peace was finally restored, this is where some changes are going to occur, as the Universe 6 arc would happen. The only difference here is that some of the beings are more powerful than the original. Vegeta theoretically could solo pretty much the entire thing by himself. Now you could argue that hit would also give him a bit of a hard time, but even if Vegeta won or he lost, they have Goku. Goku is the one who can for sure take down hit with little to no issue. And because of this, we would then go into the Goku Black arc. Now in terms of the Goku Black arc, as we know, Goku Black would have caught Goku pretty much in the same thing. So the what if could go two ways. I could go into more detail with the fact that he took over our Goku from the what if, or he took over a Goku from a different timeline. So this is Goku that does not have Frieza's potential. Now, if I went the no potential way with Frieza, then Rose Goku Black would have been easily defeated. Now with the Immortals Amasu, they would still need Zeno to be able to destroy him. So that's how it would really have went. Now, if it's the other way around, because of this, when Goku goes to fight Goku Black, Goku would then transform into his full power state, that's what I'm gonna call it for now, into his god state until I see in the comments what the form's gonna be. Goku Black was impressed that this Saiyan has this much potential, but you guys gotta remember that Goku Black does not train like Goku does. He just gets stronger because of the, of the power that's already there, he's just unlocking it. So if it's either that Goku would just start to overpower Goku Black in their fight and defeat them. The same fight would end even if you have Vegito, of course, with the Supreme Kai. We would finally see Vegito for the first time, and that power is definitely enough to overpower Merge Zamasu and destroy them. But of course, with Infinite Zamasu, he would still be destroyed by Zeno. Either way, the same event would have happened. 
So the Goku Black Arc would have just been a bit more prolonged than the other one. And you would have probably saw a cool form from Goku Black. Maybe instead of the form that you guys are seeing from the thumbnail, it might be a bit of like the opposite color of blue. So it's, you know, to prove that he's a divine being. But that's up to you guys to decide. But now, we are now going to start going into the Tournament of Power. But I'm going to save that for the next what if. And that is it for this one. If you guys thank you all for watching, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know down below what you guys think and how powerful is this version of Goku right here? I'm going to let you guys decide and think as you guys will see Goku's strength be shown more in the tournament of power. Anyway, thank you all for the support. Remember, if this video gets to 250 likes, then I shall continue it. Thank you all for the support and I'll talk to you all later.